Alright guys, today I'm going to explain how you can can strawberry jam or any other kind of jam for that matter without having to use one of these water bath canners. And you may be asking, well, why would I not want to use one? And so usually the number one reason is if you have a glass top stove, like what I have here. Usually canning isn't recommended for glass top stoves. You have to look in your booklet that came with your stove or check with your manufacturer. And not only that, a lot of the canners, like the one I bought here, will say not recommended for glass top stoves. And usually the reason for that is it can do damage to your stove because if you look underneath, it's concave. And a lot of times you can have a little bit extra heat buildup under that, which can do damage to your burner over long term. Another reason is it can actually damage the canner itself. Now you might be able to get away with using a water bath canner or even a pressure canner on your stove, but you might not want to risk it. And the reason is this, it costs just as much to replace this glass or almost as much as it does to buy a new stove. And the reason I know that is because my husband with our previous stove dropped a heavy casserole dish on the top of the glass top and shattered it. And we found out that it was almost the same cost and we ended up just buying our new stove here. Now, a second reason you may not want to use a regular water bath canner is you're just not ready to invest in one yet. One of these costs about $30 and that's not too expensive. But if you're going to can on a glass top stove, the canners that you would use for a glass top run anywhere from about $80 to $140. That's expensive, at least if you're starting out or you don't do a lot of canning, so you may not want to have that investment. Now, another reason you may not want to invest in a canner is you have a small kitchen with limited space and you just really don't have the room. You have to utilize every square inch of your kitchen. Another thing is you may not just be able to find any in stock. A lot of times during canning season, the supplies are running low because everybody's doing their canning. Sometimes you have nothing out there that you can buy. And also, another reason you might not be able to find anything is due to supply chain issues because, you know, sometimes weird things happen in the world and things can't quite get on the shelves. Now, to can without an official water bath canner like this, I'm going to go over the supplies that you'll need and you're probably going to have most of them right in your kitchen. So, the first thing that you're going to need is a stainless steel stock pot. Most people have these. If you don't, they're relatively inexpensive. Sometimes you can even find them at the thrift store. And what I have right here, I've had this one forever. This is my Revereware eight quart stainless steel pot. And it kind of has a nice thick bottom on it so it does a good job with even heat distribution. Another thing that you can use is even as small as a six quart pot which I have right here. This is a little bit wider, it's a little bit shorter, but it's only six quarts and this will even work for canning jams and jellies in the smaller jars. Now if you have something that's a little bit larger, maybe it's a 12 quart or bigger, good for you. That's probably gonna be your better option. Now what you're gonna want in your pot is you're gonna want a snug fitting lid that you can put on while you're canning. So I have these glass lids right here. I like these because you can actually see what's going on down in your pot and if you're how hard your water is boiling. Now the next thing that you're going to need is some type of rack that goes on the bottom of your pot to keep your jars up off the bottom because you don't want them directly on the heat. And so what I have here is I have just this little stainless steel steaming rack and it's eight and a half inches. And make sure you measure your pot and understand that it curves in towards the bottom so it's a little bit narrower than the diameter on top. So you're just going to have something like this. And it's, it comes with legs, but I found that the legs put it up a little bit too high. So what I'm doing instead is I'm taking these canning jar lids and I'm going to place them round side down because it's narrower at the bottom and they'll fit better. I'm going to just place those in the bottom of the pot and then I'm going to put my little platform, my stainless steel steaming rack down in there. And that's gonna put it at the perfect height to can. So just set that down in there. And then 
I can put my jars in. And with this particular pot, I have found that I can fit seven half pint jars, just regular narrow mouth jars. And they're a little bit snug, but it works really well because they're not knocking against each other while the water boils. So there's seven jars. Now what you want to make sure of, you want to make sure that you have at least room for an inch or more of water to cover the top of your jars the whole processing time. So with this pot, I actually have almost three inches. Now another thing that you can use, I'll show you with this pot, is you can actually use one of those racks that comes with your Instant Pot. This is from my eight quart Instant Pot. And that just fits down in there. And then you can set your jars directly on this. And now for this size of pot, I'm actually going to use smaller jars. They're shorter, because it's a shorter pot. So for this setup, I can get four jars in there, and then you just need to make sure that you can actually get your lid on your pot. Now, as you can see, the jars are in here, and they're packed pretty tight. And so one of the problems you might run into is when you're using your regular jar lifter, you probably aren't going to actually even be able to get that in there to get your first jar out. Because once you get your first jar out, you have a little more room to work, you know? So what I do... And there's several ways you can do this, but one thing is just regular kitchen gloves that you use for washing dishes or cleaning bathrooms. Get a clean pair and just carefully, once your water has cooled down to about 180 degrees, which is about five minutes after you've brought it off the boil, is you're just going to quickly, with your glove, just reach down in and pull your jar up and then set it down on your towel. And once you've done that, you can kind of move your jars around and you'll be able to get in there with your jar lifter. Another thing that you can do, and a lot of times your little canning kits will come with these, is just if you have a pair of tongs, you can just go in there. And they're smaller than your jar lifter. And very carefully lift a jar out with those. And that works with the smaller jars. The bigger jars, these probably aren't as stable. Now let's address the actual jars that you're going to be using just for a minute because this method with the smaller pots is only going to work with your half pint jars or smaller. And when you're purchasing your jars, you want to take into consideration the actual pot that you're using. So for example, this taller pot that is 8 quarts, this easily fits the half pint regular mouth canning jars. and the nice thing about this is, since the pot's a little bit taller, I can get the taller jars, which actually allows me to put more jars in the pot. And like I said before, you want to make sure that you have plenty of room when you put your jars in here to give yourself enough room to have at least an inch of boiling water over the top of them. Preferably two or three inches. You know, you want your pot to be at least three inches over the top of your jars. That's even better. Now, for your shorter pot, these are half pints. They hold the same amount of jam as your other jars here, these half pints. The only difference is this is a narrow mouth, so they're narrow and taller, and this is a wide mouth, so naturally they're going to be shorter and squattier. And these are a good size if you have a shorter and squattier pot. So if you notice here, I'll take a measurement. This is, oh, I'd say just about, just a little more than two inches above the jars. So that gives you enough for an inch of water over the top and then an inch extra space because when it's a rolling boil, you're going to have spillage potentially over the side. So you cannot have a pot that only gives you an inch over the jars. That just isn't enough room. So when you pick your pot, just know that when you have a pot that doesn't allow a bunch of headspace over the jars, 
or a bunch of space over the jars for the boiling water, it's actually going to be a little more difficult to keep your water from boiling over. You're gonna really have to watch it and play with that temperature. So on this, I'm going to get only four jars. So I'm gonna to have to can a half batch on this. And if I were to can in this pot, then I can get seven jars, which is almost a full batch. I'll have a little bit of jam left over. Now I'm gonna give you a little pro tip here. If you're using your regular stock pots to water bath can your jams, one thing you can do, because I showed you how, how hard they are to get in and out because they're a little bit of a tight fit, some of them, one thing that you can do instead of sterilizing your jars inside the pot of boiling water and trying to get them out and dump that water out before you start canning is to just sterilize them in your oven you can just bake them in your oven at the required temperature for sterilization and then use your oven to keep them warm right before you fill them. Another thing you can do is simply just wash them in your dishwasher right before you start canning and they'll be nice and warm and ready to go. I hope you found this helpful. For a supply list and close-up photo of the jar sizes that I used, I'm going to leave a link in the description box below. See you later! Thank you.